Right, OK, so we're going to talk about Beats One, which is a kind of radio show, but a much more up-to-date modern version of it. And we're going to be looking specifically at Julie Adenuga's show on Beats One. So let's crack on, let's start that. Her shambles are cancer, rumours spread like cancer. When I talk, you answer, don't wind me up like a dancer. Fresh paint where my hands are. So to start off with, radio has evolved over time. And now, with this kind of on-demand nature of things like Netflix, Disney+, Plus, um, Spotify, we are a, a culture that likes things on demand, as and when we want them. And so, Apple, as a company that creates Beats, um, the headphones, and also creates things like iTunes and all of their other software, they created a music streaming service, which was Apple Music in order to keep up to date with everything else that's going on and in order to try to um, promote their own music and their own platforms. So within that streaming service, Apple felt that they needed to create a DJ uh, radio style show. Now, the reason that they've done this is probably because sometimes people miss that music connoisseur. You know, that person that knows all the new music or the latest things or that person who can point you in the direction of music you might like. I think if we were left just to our own devices with Apple Music or Spotify, we might end up trapped in this loop of the same album or the same artist over and over. So Apple felt like they wanted that radio style show in order to kind of point people into the direction of other music on their service and on their platform that you might like. So let's just talk about that for a second. So radio's changed. In the olden days, back to our Radio 1, people would sit around a radio and they would listen to it. And now it's much more personal. It's, it's insulated. We have our headphones on. We listen to things on the train or in the car or just when we're winding down. It provides more of an escapism than necessarily just informed and entertained. So. That, that kind of sums up where we're at with this. We need the role of the DJ to point us in the direction of music we might like. And we want those uses and gratifications. We want to escape our daily grind of life. We want to be informed about new music that we might like. And we want to be entertained with music that we do like. And the DJ also provides an element of identifiability or relatability. They provide someone that we can, we can aspire to be like or that we can kind of interact with. And on that note, it also provides that social interaction. You can text the show, you can leave messages on social media. So you can also have that social interaction uh, with the DJ if, if you want it. So one of the benefits for Apple Music to have this Beats One radio show is that they can also get the DJs, as well as pointing you in the direction of music you might like and using their own expertise, they can also promote Apple Music products, can't they? And if a band's coming through that's signed to a particular record label, or if there's a particular service or podcast, then it's kind of beneficial to have that DJ who's got that audience of followers to kind of influence them into buying other Apple products. And also, it keeps people within the Apple bubble. And what do I mean by the Apple bubble? Uh, well, effectively, people who buy Apple products, they tend to use Apple software. And within the Apple software, they also buy, tend to buy Apple hardware, your iMacs or your Beats headphones, your Apple phone, and it's all about getting the latest one. And it creates a bubble where if you are an Apple service user, all your needs are catered for by that one company. And so you, it, there's a sense of self-esteem uh, if we look at Maslow's needs. Being within the Apple bubble is quite sought after. It's, it's quite a trendy thing. So let's just talk a little bit about Julie Adenuga. Here's some facts about her that I'm going to throw up on the screen. OK, so when we look at the type of audience that um, Beats One is going to have, radio is traditionally kind of a passive audience. So you tend to have the radio on whilst you're in the bath or you're doing homework or uh, whilst you're driving or if you're in a shop it'll be playing in the background. But it's a background thing. 
However, Apple kind of cross into that line where they make it a bit more active. And the way that they do that is that it's a streaming service. It's not necessarily on at a specific time. It's a bit like a podcast, so you can listen to it as and when you want. And also, even though there are certain times for Beats 1 to tune in and to listen to the, the DJ that you like, the other thing is that there's a lot of choice. There's a whole range. So you can choose the genre that you want to listen to. You can choose specifically what it is that you want to see, or the artists. And with this convergence of technology, so you can watch uh, Julia Danuga do interview styles, which is one of the things she's most famous for, this relaxed, informal interview style. How many teabags are you supposed two. to put in a teapot? Well, two, if we're having two cups of tea. Can you get the, mm. can you get the mugs? The mugs? The mugs? Right can you get the mugs? Today, Georgia, uh -huh. we're going to have a cup of tea. We are. Just normal English breakfast tea. This is technically us not being able to meet up at each other's houses. So having to find like a house in the it middle of where we How live. How long does it take you to get here? Um, this is like a 20 minute. It took me an hour. Really? So it's not in, in the middle. It took you an hour to get here? Mm -hmm. What was you driving in? Uber. When did you move out of your house? When I was 18. 18? Yeah. You moved straight to London? Straight to London. But before that, so when I was 15, I would come up to, so I met our manager. He saw a video of me on YouTube. Yeah. Because someone was sent it to him. And he came to meet me and my dad in Nando's. Yeah. Back at home in Wolfsburg. <laughs> and he was like, I'd like um, I'd like to like set up some sessions with me. Mm. And then, so I was like, I don't know who to you know. And I'm doing so much work in, well, I'm writing loads in London as well as at home. And yeah. my manager's in London. I may as well move here. So I asked my auntie and uncle, can I move here? And I got a Starbucks transfer because I worked at Starbucks. <laughs> Moved up. And like, I worked in Starbucks like four times a week. Then I'd write. Go home, but I'm, I literally I didn't have any friends. I just like like people forget I'm from Warsaw. Yeah, I'm West Midlands. When I talk more, my accent does come out. So, <laughs> but I'm not from London, so for me to even be where I'm now is it's crazy. Crazy, because you just because when I was growing up, all I thought was like oh, for how lucky like I used to watch some stuff from people going to the Brit school. And I, went, I want to be that. I want to do that. I couldn't because I didn't live that. I want to order some food and then I want to go and sit down properly. What food? What's the vibe? Um, you can just do pizza. Do you like pizzas? Yeah. My favourite pizza is margarita pizza yeah. with just pepperoni and sweet corn. Well, I don't like sweet corn. Oh. But we can do, let's do that. No, it's okay. No, it's, no. We'll I go, don't mind it. We'll go half and half. Okay. Okay? Mm hmm I was thinking about, like, what's going to happen after your album comes out and then who you're going to be and, like, where you're going to live and are you going to do, like, an Adele and, like, just go and live in a mansion quietly and not go anywhere? Or are you going to be like at Carnival? <laughs> you can watch them on YouTube or you can uh, listen to them on the podcast or download them and you can really have a lot of active choice in what you watch, how you listen, when you listen. So that makes it more active. You're, you're deliberately setting out to make those choices and you're choosing the content that you want. Whereas in contrast on Radio 1 for example, They'll play songs that are in the top 40, but you rarely get any kind of choice about what those songs are. It will cross a whole range of genres, and you're, you're really you're listening to whatever content they put on. But with the, the Beats 1, it's much more niche and specific. Now, it's interesting just to compare that to the audience as well, because although it's more niche, uh, Julia Danuga really focuses on the UK grime and hip-hop scene. And it's a very niche music genre. But because it's an Apple product and it's on Apple Music, it's actually reaching a far larger audience. So Radio 1, very generic, very kind of targeted at a whole range of that teenage audience. But it's also very niche as in it's a UK thing. Whereas Beats 1, very niche, very targeted, but it's global. So it's still got a huge audience. So... Finally then, I guess it's worth just having that um, discussion about radio, traditional radio, as in sitting behind a booth and just talking and playing music. Is there a place for that anymore? Um, and probably not. If you look at most radio stations now, they've had to adapt and they've had to evolve. There are visual elements, 
you can watch things on YouTube, there's strong social media presence and there's much more opportunities for the audience to actively engage and to have control over the content. And I think radio needs to keep evolving that way in order to survive in the current climate of streaming sites on demand and the whole range of um, products and media platforms that are out there. So that's Beats 1.